Hello and welcome in. My name is John Davis and I'm the Director of Field Operations for Major League Football or MLFB. As we prepare to launch this season, I'm going to bring you a series of short informative interviews to introduce some of the coaches and staff that are helping make Major League Football possible as we prepare for Cleats in the Grass in 2022. The first of those interviews is with our second head coach to be announced on the 21st of March, Coach Terry Shea. Coach Shea brings over 50 plus years of coaching experience at the collegiate and NFL levels with stops at such places as Utah State, San Jose State, Cal, Stanford, and Rutgers University. Coach Shea was a two-time Big West champion in 1990 and 91 as the head coach at San Jose State. He was also the Big West Coach of the Year in 1990 and then followed it up with the Big East Coach of the Year in 1998 as the head coach at Rutgers University. I'm very pleased to introduce Coach Terry Shea. Coach, I want to kind of get into some of the things that we discussed off camera with regard to the league itself. Um, but I want to start out with really uh, uh, capturing you've got 50 plus years of coaching experience. You've been a head coach twice at the collegiate level, most recently at Rutgers and uh, eight years with various teams in the NFL coaching. So I want to kind of let you in your own words uh, talk about what you bring to the table as a head coach in this developmental league of major league football. Well, my coaching journey, John, uh, began at the University of Oregon <clears throat> as I was earning a master's degree uh, in counseling psychology. And I, I coached alongside two really prominent coaches, uh, George Seifert on the defensive side for my first year. And he went on to win multiple Super Bowls with the 49ers as a defensive coordinator and head coach. And then I switched over to the offensive side with John Robinson. And John uh, took his USC team to the national championship and later coached the Los Angeles Rams. So I was fortunate to be around <clears throat> two really special coaches. From there, my uh, Division I college career began uh, with stops at Utah State, University of California, <clears throat> at Berkeley, Stanford University, San Jose State, and then uh, uh, Rutgers University. So uh, from there, after multiple years in the division one side of it and uh, seven years as a head coach at that level, I entered the NFL. And for eight years, I was in the NFL and five of those eight years, I was under Dick Vermeil alongside coach Vermeil, who is being inducted into the uh, NFL hall of fame this August. So I was very fortunate to be around some outstanding coaches as my journey carried me through my coaching career Bill Walsh at Stanford was another name that uh, I will always embrace. But uh, from there, I uh, started to train quarterbacks and for the NFL draft and the combine. And, and I was around some outstanding players as I spent several months each year with them. Matthew Stafford, who just won the Super Bowl. Um, Sam Bradford, Heisman Trophy winner. RG3 from Baylor, uh, Heisman Trophy winner. Blaine Gabbard, who's still playing. And uh, <clears throat> so I was really enjoying that part of my career. And then I got a call from Marty Schottenheimer and he was at the, at that time uh, named the head coach for the, for another developmental league called the UFL. <clears throat> and so I traveled to Virginia beach and we won the championship that year in the UFL with Marty as the head coach. So uh, my, my coaching career has been just been blessed with uh, outstanding mentors and um, that's what I find myself passing along to my fellow coaches today and to the players I have the privilege to coach. You know, I think that is so critical because for, for the folks to understand the, the, from the very beginning, the intent of this league was not just to develop players and hopefully raise their game to a level where they could be viewed and compete for spots in the NFL, but also to develop coaches. And I think that's one thing they've done very well with yourself and the other two coaches that have been named at this point, you know, getting guys that have just a, an incredible uh, resume of experience, having learned from the greats and bringing that to the field. So talk a little bit about, you know, obviously as a head coach, um, your focus in practice may be a little bit, specialized maybe with quarterbacks, but you've got a myriad of things to worry about during practices and games. So how do you feel like everything you just talked about with the mentorship you experienced and 
uh, all the great players you've coached. W- what kind of things can you bring to the sideline presence for these guys to look up to, you know, as they go through the game and, and figure out how to make this work for them? Well, the key is to surround yourself as a head coach with really competent assistant coaches. And I, I tried to make a, a, a real strong play to hire coaches that had NFL experience uh, as, as a coach. I had on my staff an NFL player that uh, played for 10 years in the NFL. Uh, another uh, coach who won four Super Bowls as a 49er in the NFL as a receiver. So I've, I've really attempted to, to uh, make sure that the young men that we're going to have a chance to develop and, and mentor uh, in, in a, uh, Major League Football are going to be exposed to some really outstanding backgrounds in terms of coaches. So that's my intent. I still remember, John, uh, here's just, you know, you talk about developing young coaches. Uh, when I was with Bill Walsh at Stanford, I remember he stopped practice one day, um, told his defensive coach to uh, drop the ball, and he sent a quarterback down to the defensive secondary area of the field uh, where they were working on interceptions. And he demanded that the interception drill be thrown by a legitimate passer, and in that case, a college quarterback, rather than a coach uh, floating a ball up there that uh, doesn't have game-like spin on it. So those are the things that uh, that I will certainly uh, be uh, uh, fortunate enough to bring to my coaching staff. And, and I think the players will be the beneficiary of it. Yeah, I agree. And let's just let's segue into that. When you look at the nature of a developmental league, obviously the NFL had NFL Europe and there have been various other leagues that have tried and unfortunately failed. We've got at least one active now and another that's going to be active next year. When you talk about a developmental league and we've been on calls together with the uh, uh, executive management team of this league, what do you think the, the biggest benefits are from a coaching perspective of a developmental league to, to try and give players that opportunity? Well, it begins with exposure and uh, uh, along with exposure is evaluation in, in my opinion. And I've been involved with developmental leagues for a number of years. And uh, those, are the, those are the two factors that I think are so important. Exposure in terms of putting a player in a competitive football environment. Uh, rather than sitting around in his living room, uh, hoping that the phone will ring or, uh, you know, trapped in a weight room where, where he does nothing but lift weights that uh, can prepare you, but it doesn't certainly uh, apply you with the opportunity to show your skill. So exposure is one. And then the evaluation process that a player has the opportunity to go through. I'm not only the coaches on this, on the existing staff, of major league football, but you know, the information that that these coaches um, will, will start to create for each player, that information travels and it travels throughout the NFL. It travels throughout the CFL. You know, if, if the player aspires to want to, you know, obviously move on and and try to reach that level of football. So from that standpoint, I think it's, it's really important exposure and evaluation are my two trigger uh, words for for uh, developmental leagues and and how they benefit how how a player can benefit from from that opportunity. What do you think the 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 coaches really benefit the most from in terms of you know thinking back to when you started as a GA in Oregon all the way up through the years you spent in the early two thousands in the NFL? What do you think the the coaches need to come into this with looking to gain? Well, n- number one, I think uh, every coach that signs up for this opportunity uh, just welcomes the opportunity to be a, a teacher and uh, a teacher of skill, a teacher of, uh, of what it takes to uh, play at a high level at the, you know, in the professional ranks. So from that standpoint, I think uh, every coach has that, that objective and, and has that goal in mind. And I think they also have an opportunity uh, I know I've chosen a couple of younger coaches to uh, assist me on my staff as well. And, and they will grow with the, uh, with the opportunity to coach within a professional environment. When you're coaching at the college level, the objectives are a little different. Uh, the scoreboard is still the same, but the, 
the intrinsic objectives are different. And I think when you coach at the uh, professional level, whether it be a developmental league or, or the NFL, you, you are exposing yourself to uh, a totally different approach to the game. And the attitude of the players is different. Uh, they still have the same passion. They still have the same, uh, even, maybe even more so, the love of the game uh, for the players who, who will participate in Major League Football. But uh, from that standpoint, I, I think each coach has this great opportunity to understand that coaching at the professional level and in this environment is just, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a notch above what their previous coaching backgrounds uh, afford them. Yeah, I think that um, important to all of this and what I love about your background is, you know, as, you know, starting out as a GA and then being an assistant coach and offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, and, and obviously head coach twice, you've had an opportunity to see the value of the relationships that you can develop with not only your staff, but with the players. Talk to that a little bit about, about you know, if I'm a young player and I'm, I'm ultimately drafted or, or recruited to play on your team, what, what should I expect in terms of your approach to the game as far as your relationship with the, with the players on the field? Well, I, I believe that the, uh, the starting point for me is, is uh, how to teach a young aspiring player to be a good teammate. And uh, if he can handle that, and if he can meet that challenge, then he's got a chance to uh, get his foot in the door at the next level of football, be it the NFL or again, the CFL. So I think that's, that's what a player has to understand. And that's what I'm going to bring to his world is, hey, let's be a great teammate. Uh, understand how important that is and how important that will be in your next step in your journey to, toward, you know, professional football. And with that in mind, I think the player will, will profit and he will, he will be willing to change. A lot of these players, John, uh, are challenged. And in order to meet the challenge, they need to change uh, the way they approach the challenge. Uh, maybe that's what uh, held them back earlier uh, when they when they left the college ranks. So to change and to be a quick learner, uh, to um, be willing to to learn a new system, uh, those are all important qualities that a that a young aspiring professional football player needs needs to uh, capture. Yeah, I agree. Well, Coach, I uh, I'm gonna I want to be respectful of your time. The goal here was 15 to 20 minutes, and we've kind of met that window. I can tell you that uh, uh, having been involved on the staff side uh, and running the pro day tryout camps for MLFB over the last three and a half years, um, it is it's always been an exciting and and I think just complete upside opportunity. Uh, for anybody like me, but certainly for the players that we're going to, you know, coach, teach, and employ in terms of this. So Major League Football is due to have cleats in the grass playing games this year in 2022. There'll be more to follow if you are inclined, the, the viewing public, to uh, check it out. We have an active uh, website at MLFB.com, so you can read more about Coach Shea and our other coaches, as well as the announcements and the staff that are working with Major League Football. Coach Terry Shea, really appreciate uh, getting to see you again. I'm looking forward to uh, training camp when we finally get that rolling, and uh, I'm really excited about the upcoming season. Thanks, John. I'm really looking forward to it as well. Can't wait. Okay, Coach. Take care.